Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our eLotus webinar today. My name is Donna and I will be your host and your moderator for today's class. Today's webinar is Organ Balance Acupuncture and Herbs for Fertility and Nasal Allergies with Dr. Hung Wei Cheng. The majority of this class is actually going to be focused on the infertility part. So this class is a rebroadcast from November 2019 and this was day five of Dr. Chong of Dr. Chang's lectures. And you will hear Grace, who was the MC for that day, mention that during the class. So the other, yesterday we had the palm diagnosis reading, that was day one. And so the other days you can, if you can understand Chinese, you can find them on Dr. Chang's bio page and you can access it too. We're in the process of seeing which classes that we are able to translate for you guys into English, depending on how much you guys enjoy it. So today's class is does have an English voiceover and it has English subtitles. And the PowerPoint has been translated for you guys as well into English. And the PowerPoint you can find, the lecture notes of the PowerPoint you can find on the blue course access page. Today's webinar, if you're watching it live with us today, you are, it will still be considered live credit. And so you'll notice in Grace's introduction, she will describe the Adobe platform. And so we're not using Adobe anymore, we're using Zoom. So let me quickly go over that. You will see on your screen that there are two windows. There's the PowerPoint window, which you'll see the eLotus presentation right now. And you will see the video feed, which is where you'll see me. And there's also options like the chat option and the Q&A. So if you have a question for Dr. Chang, please type it into the Q&A the Q and A box. And for that, please try to save your questions until the end of the class because a lot of times these questions are answered during the class anyway. So and then for the chat function, it's automatically defaulted to send your chat to all panelists. So what you want to do right now, and if you can do this now so you don't forget later, is set your chat to all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see your comments when we are conversating together. Okay, and also during the the talk, uh, I'm sorry, also during Grace's talk, she she mentions the quiz and the quiz access being available for two weeks. So now we're actually, we the quiz is available for four weeks, so just keep that in mind. And I've actually received a lot of emails from attendees yesterday asking where the quiz is. So you probably missed my announcement that the quiz will be ready is the next day, which is today in the afternoon and I will send an email out when it's ready. So for anyone who attended yesterday's class, the quiz has, is not available yet. It's still morning time here and I have to do the attendance and run the report and all that stuff. So it does take time. Please be patient and I will send an email out when that quiz is ready. Okay, so the webinar today, will it'll be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Lunch will be 1 to 2 p.m. We'll have two short breaks in the morning and two in the afternoon. And the video replay for today's class as well as yesterday's will be available on Monday. And again, I'll send an email out when that one is ready too. Okay, so today we are lucky to have with us Dr. Hong Wei Cheng. Dr. Cheng is currently the chairperson of the Traditional Chinese Medical Essence Association. In his private practice at Hong Yun Tang, Chinese Medical Clinic, he treats over 70 patients daily. His specialty is in post-stroke and brain injury patients. His treatment concept includes balancing the five dong organs with current medical knowledge to improve the patient's overall health. Overall health. The focus is not merely to alleviate symptoms, but to reestablish balance in the body so they don't have to seek medical attention. And like he said yesterday, the best doctor doesn't the best doctor treats the condition before it actually happens, prevent, preventative medicine. So we're really glad to have you guys here. He does share some interesting recommendations for positions for infertility that I have not heard anywhere. So I hope you guys, it will pique your curiosity and you're brave enough to recommend it to your patient. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and start the class.
Testing, testing. Let's do some testing first. Friends online, if you can hear me and see me, would you type yes into the chat room? Thank you. Great. Let's get started. Good morning to everyone here at the seminar live as well as those online. My name is Grace Liu, Chinese CEU coordinator for ASTCMR.org and eLotus.org. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Today's Chinese class is hosted by ASTCMR.org and eLotus.org. Day five. In the past 20 years, eLotus has been providing English continuing education seminars and webinars. We have invited speakers with in-depth clinical knowledge to give webinars through our platform. These speakers have selflessly shared their clinical knowledge. To all of us across the globe, Today, on the eLotus website, we have over 200 speakers, 3,000 plus CEU hours of recordings, and students from over 65 countries. And we have translated some courses into various languages, such as Spanish, Portuguese, French, German, and Italian. This year, we have embarked on hosting more Chinese classes. eLotus is the biggest CEU provider and platform in the United States. Our goal is to promote Chinese medicine throughout the world. We hope you will join us in our mission so more people can benefit from the wisdom of our ancestors. Before we start, I would like to give an overview to those of you watching from home. What the webinar platform looks like. First, you should see four sections on your screen. Top left, bottom left, top right and bottom right. Our tech can switch views between the speaker and the lecture notes. Okay, so on the top left, you should see me, the MC for today. This is also where the speaker will appear when class starts. On the bottom left is the chat room. This is where you can discuss and ask questions to your fellow colleagues. Questions here will be gathered for the speaker to answer if time allows. The left upper corner is the lecture notes. The right bottom corner has important notes that we need to share with you. So if you see all these pods, then your webinar experience should be fine today. All right, next, let's go over some rules. Due to copyright reasons, audio or video recordings are not allowed. Thank you for your understanding. Also, please turn your phone to the silent mode. Thank you for your cooperation. Also, everyone needs to sign in. If you didn't on your way in, please do so now. For the webinar attendees, we will automatically log your attendance. We suggest for you not to log out during lunch to avoid any issues logging back in. When class ends today, 
You guys here will receive your CEU certificate. For those of you online, if you have an eLotus account, please take the quiz in your account. You have two weeks. After you pass, you can print your CEU certificate. If you registered through astcmr.org, then after class is over, we will mail you the CEU certificate. You must pass by answering seven out of 10 questions correctly. After you pass, around the third week, we will email you the CEU certificate. There are two breaks in the morning. Lunch is from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. There will also be two breaks in the afternoon. All right. Today is day five and the topic is Infertility and Allergy Treatment with Five Zhang Acupuncture and Herbs. We are very happy to have Dr. Heng Wei Cheng from Taiwan. Good morning. Today's topic is a happy topic. You are going to learn how to create life. It's marvelous. Many people suffer from infertility. So today, I will teach you how to help them have a baby. Hello, hello. Yes, I feel the microphone works better this way. Of course, today we have new students, so I will briefly go over some basics. Five Zhang balance is essential to health. First, we all come from our parents our mom and dad. The sperm and egg join and here we are. This miracle is dependent on the kidney essence. Growth and maturation also depends on the kidneys. So naturally, kidney is the key organ when treating infertility patients. It's a very important organ. Next, where does energy come from? Three organs mainly, the lung, spleen, and the kidney. So, kidney stores jing. Next is food. We need to eat in order to have energy, right? Where does qi come from? Spleen and stomach. With digestion and transformation, food turns into energy. Spleen ascends the clear and produces qi and fluids for the lungs. Also, it produces blood for the liver. Now let's take a look at the lung. If you can talk, like me talking now, whether or not I have energy when I talk depends directly on the lung because it controls the entire body's chi. Some people look tired, listless, and have low voice. They mostly have lung chi deficiency. Lung dominates chi and pushes the heart to beat and pushes blood into the vessels so it assists the heart to circulate blood through the body. If qi moves, blood can move. Qi is the commander of blood. Blood is the mother of qi. So that's why you must remember to add herbs to tonify the lung qi when you want to strengthen the heart functions. That's why my circulation number one formula has huang qi in it. My circulation number two formula also has huang qi. Also, formulas like zhigong kao tang also has ren shen. A strong heart, needs strong qi for it to beat and also push the blood in the vessels. If there is water on the floor, we need to mop it, right? So there actually needs to be force. So lung qi is very important. So spleen is responsible for transformation and production of qi and blood. It produces blood. Anemic patients usually will have a weak right guan pulse. You need to tonify the spleen. 
because it cannot absorb the iron or the blood tonics if it's weak. Spleen is a very important organ. Next, we need to talk about the kidney. Kidney and bladder functions. Over the break, I heard a colleague has kidney cancer. We as practitioners need to watch our own health. If you can understand TCM theory completely and achieve five Zhang balance, heart, kidney, liver, and all the five organs are balanced, then you are unlikely to be sick. Of course, you should also learn pulse diagnosis. It can reveal more in-depth information. The last few days, you all had a chance to feel each other's pulses. Sometimes you will feel something, but the patient will deny it. But you are certain of it. Sometimes it's because the patient doesn't even realize that's a problem because he or she had it for a long time. So a minor problem can continue for a long time and later become a big problem. An irreversible problem. You must all study pulse diagnosis very diligently. Practice as much as you can clinically. Let's get back to infertility. The most famous diagnosis from ancient texts is a cold womb. Today, many women have fibroids, cysts, etc. So you must also think of some other ways to help these people. So the key is here. Yesterday, we saw four charts of the vessels. So let me tell you, many women have problems with the vessels. Do you understand what I mean? Many suffer from this problem today. You have to address it. So those who cannot get pregnant may be due to poor blood flow to the uterus. Yes, uterus needs blood circulation too, right? When the circulation is poor, it can affect the function and lead to infertility. Implantation or normal development may be difficult. Under this circumstance, where there is insufficient blood flow to the uterus, you can warm the kidney yang and improve the circulation. But the poor circulation may be systemic. Warming the kidney yang can only temporarily improve circulation. It's not enough. Once the patient stops the yang tonics, or after a while the circulation may become poor again. Why? Because the heart is weak. So we need to use my blood moving formula number one. She may have numbness, coldness of the extremities, interscapular pain, dizziness upon standing, high blood pressure, sugar, or cholesterol. Then you need to use my blood circulation formula number two. Or the patient may have blood clots during menstruation. She may not think much of it since it's prevalent. But it's better not to have it. Blood clots. Some have it, some don't. Or they didn't have it before and do now. That all means something. It's better not to have any. Clots signify obstruction in TCM. So we have to move blood. We have to address this in addition to tonifying the kidney. Infertility in my five Zhang balance system involves the kidney as the number one related organ. The next one is the heart. The last one is the spleen. These are the three organs that are most likely to be deficient in an infertility patient. For obstruction, we have to treat the liver. Many women, Taiwanese women, have overly caring mother-in-law and father-in-law. Whether it's from sincerity or despise, they wonder why the daughter-in-law cannot have kids while their son is healthy. So most women have pressure leading to stress. The first year is still okay. After the second or third year, the pressure mounts. So in these cases, you have to spread the liver chi. Sounds like it's very complicated with so many organs involved and you don't know what to do. Don't worry. If you feel she has blood stasis and stress, you can combine the herbs that move, meaning you can use the herbs that move blood and spread chi together. That's right. 
but you would not use the movers with the tonics. You can give herbs that move blood and spread chi at the same time, let's say in the morning. Then use a tonic formula in the afternoon, then alternate the two. Okay, so that's the general principle. Same here. My chart here. You can create your own. So, if your pulse taking skill is not as good as mine, after all, I've been taking pulses for 20 years. If you cannot accurately assess, let's say, the left tsun or the right guan are weak, or you don't specialize in pulses. Instead, you can use a chart like this. Ask them to fill it out for you. For example, if you want to know if the heart is weak, ask them to check the symptoms such as palpitation, panic feeling, or easily running out of breath. When climbing stairs, your patient can check off all symptoms related to each organ. If you want to know if the kidneys are weak, see if they checked off the symptoms of irregular menses, dysmenorrhea, leucorrhea, frequent urination, incontinence, etc. If you want to know if there is any spleen chi deficiency, see if they checked off distension after meals, abnormal bowel movement, etc. You can also check the patient's palms. If you see an island pattern on the heart line, then without a doubt, the cardiovascular function is weaker. If the island pattern appears on the lifeline, then the kidney chi is weak. If the lifeline is shorter, that also means the kidney chi is weaker. If the logic line has an island or is shorter, it means this patient is susceptible to emotional issues. So you have many tools in the clinic to assess the patient's symptom chart will allow you to understand if the patient has a weak heart or a weak spleen, have clots or not, etc. Even if you are not good with pulse diagnosis, at least you have a general direction. Together with looking at the palm, record all your findings. Island pattern on the heart line, treat the heart. Island pattern on the lifeline, treat the kidney. Island pattern on the logic line, the patient is susceptible to emotional issues. So from here, if you don't feel any pulse on the left tsun and the right guan sinks down not on the second floor, but on the first floor or the basement level. You don't feel anything on the second or first floor. Then you know you must tonify the spleen and stomach. As for clots, you can just ask. No need to take the pulse. Do you have clots? Yes? Okay, then you need to move blood. Okay. When patients come to you, check their chief complaints. Check what organ or organs are involved. For example, the kidney. So, if our affected organ is the kidney, then you need to find the causative organ. For example, if the heart is deficient. So, our target organ is the kidney. Next, check to see if there is any spleen or heart deficiency or liver blood deficiency. You can decide these later. The objective is to achieve a five Zhang balance. Here are the steps to disease analysis. First, determine if there is any exterior condition. Infertility has nothing to do with exterior conditions. However, if the infertility patient also has an exterior condition, of course you would address the exterior condition first. Oops. Obstruction or stagnation, this is important. I would like you to mark an asterisk sign here. There are three types. The first is qi stagnation. Second, blood stagnation. Third, jin yi or fluid stagnation. Qi stagnation usually involves the lung and the liver. Most frequently seen in the clinic is liver qi stagnation. When blood is obstructed, we are dealing with blood stasis. You can decide this by asking the patient if there are clots during the menses or any stabbing pain, etc. It's easy to figure out. The pulse can be either big or deep or wiry. Jin yi or fluid stagnation usually occurs in fatty patients. Flabby, fat tongue, teeth marks, greasy coating. You can use phlegm resolving or damp dispelling herbs. You can also design a comprehensive formula for removing all stasis by Chai Hu Shu Gan Tang, Jia Wei Xiao Yao San, Xiao Fu Zhu Yu Tang, and Wen Dan Tang.
This formula will cover all three types of stagnation. So stagnation is important to address clinically. Heat and cold syndrome. True heat and true cold are rarely seen in the clinic. They mostly appear with deficiency, so I categorize them there. We can discuss this further later. So after you address the stagnation, you need to address the deficiencies, such as kidney deficiency, spleen deficiency, heart deficiency, liver blood deficiency, or lung chi deficiency. But what I see the most in my clinic is kidney deficiency, spleen and heart deficiencies. This is what I see in Taiwan. Of course, it may be different here in the United States. Additionally, heart and spleen deficiencies are often overlooked, especially heart problems and the vessels. You can copy me. Use my circulation number one and number two formulas. Remember, if you want to achieve the same effect as me, you need to use the same brand of herbs, Coda in Taiwan or Evergreen Herbs here in the United States. They are my herbal supplier for my clinic. Okay, next. Although today is day five, we still have new students attending for the first time. I will review the formulas later. At the end of the class, the concept of organ balance is to balance the five organs. I am not only treating the symptoms. I categorize acupuncturists in three levels, beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Beginners treat the local area. I have it here. The effectiveness of acupuncture, same with herbs, where it can be very obvious. For example, if you have stomach pain, treat the stomach channel. Treat the Xiao Yang channel for Xiao Yang headache. Frontal headache, treat the Yang Ming channel. It's a single system concept. It's simple and easy to learn. Also, it appears to be effective. But you have to experience the following, where the patient experiences the effect while the needles are in, but no longer when the needles are pulled out. They may start to hurt again when they are paying for their treatment at the reception desk. Or it can be in the morning the effect is great with needles, but the pain returns in the evening. This is the drawback of local treatment as this strategy is for beginners. So as a beginner's method, the effect is short and not long-lasting. It's simple and easy to learn. However, the duration of effect is short. Local style needling at the base of the pyramid. Everyone needs to learn this method. But you should not be satisfied with this short-term result. You should advance to the intermediate level at some point. What is an intermediate acupuncturist? So in addition to just needling the local point, you know the temporal headaches affect the Xiaoyang channel. And you know you can needle the Mu point, a distal point, to the San Jiao channel. Triple heater three. This is an important pain-relieving point or the point on the foot Xiaoyang channel, gallbladder 41. This is intermediate level acupuncture. You know how to use distal points for treating problems of other locations. This is very common. Patients often ask me, Dr. Chain, I have right hand pain. Why are you needling my left foot? I needled Dr. Hu yesterday, right? She had right shoulder pain and I needled her left foot. Patients often think we have it wrong. Why are we needling where there is no problem? It's very easy to explain. You can ask the patient, if you have heart pain, do I needle your heart? If you have hepatitis, do I needle your liver? If you have a stroke, do I open your head and needle your brain? Of course not. The most precious idea or value in Chinese medicine is that one particular point can act as a keyhole to unlock the mechanism of your body to start self-healing systemically throughout the entire body. What is that? That's advanced level acupuncture involving internal medicine. If there is hyperactivity or inflammation in the body or excess heat, then I know I have to use the yin point, which can activate the body's own mechanism to sedate the heat. Ying points can clear heat over the entire course of the channel. If I know you have a qi deficiency, lung qi deficiency, I know in TCM there is one point which acts like a switch that can automatically refill the qi in the body. What's that point? The A1A point of the lung. 
Tonify the mother when the son is weak. Lung 9. This is why TCM is interesting. Anyone can eat a she points. Right? Who doesn't know how to look along the channel and needle the ashi points? At most, you are an intermediate acupuncturist. If you want to be one level higher, you need to go back to the theories. Kidney stores jing and is responsible for growth and maturation, right? When the testicles don't descend, it must be a kidney problem. It's a growth and maturation problem. Developmental problem. So to confirm, take the pulse. If the chi pulse is weak, then bingo. For sure I can tonify the kidney, right? You can't say genitals are controlled by the liver, so you will needle the liver channel. Yes, you may see some results. Sometimes you may be lucky. Sometimes you don't have to do much to cure the patient. What I mean is, some conditions are mild or the patient may recover themselves. No matter what points you use, you will see results. But other conditions are tough. You should know what points and why in order to see results. In this case, liver may not be enough, although liver and kidney are from the same source. No matter what, we need to tonify the kidney. The patient can truly recover only after you tonified the kidneys, so I recommend everyone to review the fundamentals you learned in school. You may think it's all theories and not useful clinically, or your professor didn't explain it thoroughly. Those theories are the foundations in which I base my treatment plans for taking care of severe and chronic patients. I don't use any other theories outside of Chinese medicine. I use Western medicine as a reference. My treatment is purely TCM. So don't underestimate the power of Chinese medicine. Polish your skills and don't be jack of all trades and master of none. You can learn other protocols, but first you must be good in TCM. With that, you can then more successfully integrate other strategies. Have you read the martial arts novel, Tianlong Babu, Demigods and Semi-Devils? Who has the best kung fu? Is it the one who knows a lot of different styles of kung fu? Or is it the monk who steals martial arts secret books? Who is the best? I think the first is the old monk who sweeps the floor daily. The next is probably Xiao Feng, who practices every day and has mastered the basics. He knows that his Kung Fu can injure people, therefore he recites the Buddhist sutras. In TCM, it's the same. When you are a great doctor, more and more people will seek your help. You must practice self-cultivation. If you use this opportunity to charge more from your patients, trying to profit from others' sufferings, at the end, karma will find its way back to you. You may end up with a severe disease in which you cannot treat yourself or recover from. So back to acupuncture. Advanced acupuncture takes consideration to the Zhang Fu system. In order to reach Zhang Fu balance, you need to understand the five Zhang point prescription principles. Here is a brief introduction. The first group is the five elements prescription principle. Don't think that technology has advanced and the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, water, don't matter anymore. If you disregard the five elements, you will learn a lot less about Chinese medicine. That would be a shame. There is significance to the five elements. Basic science explains earth is a stable type of qi. Metal is a constrictive type of qi. Wood is spreading. Water is sinking in nature. Fire raises upward. This forms a complete and stable system. When I was an engineer, I thought water would be zero. Fire would be one, etc. When analyzing, one bit can be either zero or one, two possibilities. In other words, there are two possibilities. Two to the second is four. Two to the third is eight. At the end, it can develop into the Bagua. Nature is based on science. It's up to you whether you believe it or not.
So first, under the five elements prescription is A1. Son and mother tonify and sedating method. That means you would tonify the mother for all kinds of deficiency conditions. If the lung is weak, tonify the mother point of the lung channel, lung 9. Some will say that mother refers to the mother of the deficiency element. Sedating the son is sedating the son of the element. The only time to choose points from the actual organ of sickness is when there is no deficiency or excess. Have you heard of this? This theory is correct. I don't deny it. Sometimes if you want to tonify the lung, you have to tonify the spleen. But my explanation is also absolutely correct. Out of the 11 points on the lung channel, is it possible that there is no point to tonify itself? That would be so sad. Are those 11 points useless? Of course not. Right? How can it be possible that these points can only be used when there is no deficiency or excess? What the heck are those 11 points for then? Understand? So our method of selecting the points that the actual channel needs to sedate or tonify is absolutely correct. No one can deny that. Some doctors like to use channel theories to derive a treatment plan. They don't use my method. They focus more on channels and collaterals and may not agree with me. But I must say it again. My method is absolutely correct. Just think about it. There must be a point on the lung channel that can tonify. Okay, kidney channel has so many points, but there also must be one that can tonify the kidney itself. Who says you have to look to the mother channel to tonify? A1A, tonify the mother for deficiency and sedate the son for excess. If the pericardium channel has excess, let's check right now what the symptoms are. What page is the pericardium on? Page 6. I can't teach everything. You can use this as a reference in your clinic. Review it often. You will have a deeper understanding of TCM. Let's see the symptoms of pericardium excess. Heart controls blood, right? To the right, do you see deficiency, excess, cold, and heat? So what is the symptom of heart pericardium excess? Can you read it to me? Myocardial infarction, angina pectoris, pericardium excess. Is sedating the sun channel the only way to sedate pericardium excess? Is it possible there are no points on the pericardium channel to entreat angina pectoris? Of course. Why do I have to look for the sun channel? Which is the sun channel? San Jiao, right? Is San Jiao the only choice? Of course not. To look for the sun point on the pericardium channel, we need to look at A1B. Which point is that? Think. The story of Alan. Alan is a concubine. Her menses was late. She thought she was pregnant with the emperor's son. She asked the imperial doctor for a checkup. Dr. Wen took her pulse. He said, sorry, you only have qi and blood deficiency leading to delayed menstruation. You are not pregnant. She was very sad and wanted to commit suicide by jumping into a lake. She ended up with pneumonia and tuberculosis. The first five points of the pericardium channel correlate to wood, fire, wood, metal, water. Pericardium channel belongs to fire. So I have to find the earth point on the pericardium channel. That point is pericardium 7. What is it used for? Myocardial infarction. Angina pectoris. Understand? It's really easy if you already know the theory and logic behind choosing this point. If no one told you what point to use for angina, you may choose to use the four gates. The four gates treat more qi conditions, not as much blood. But will it work? Yes, somewhat. But why don't you go directly to the source of the problem, the pericardium channel? It's a much better treatment. So is A1B the only method to treat excess pericardium manifesting in myocardial infarction or angina pectoris? You can also use the she-cleft point of the Yuan Luo points method. The reason being she-cleft points are the best at treating emergency, stubborn, and bleeding conditions. So for myocardial infarct and angina pectoris, you can add the she-cleft point of the pericardium channel, pericardium 4.
If A and B treatments are not sufficient, you can look for others under C. If it's a special point, especially if it's recorded in a song, then usually it's more empirical rather than based on TCM theories. Songs are usually written by old doctors who have plenty of experience. For example, chest pain use XYZ point, hand pain use ABC point, Chang's three needles, chest pain three needles, etc. I can invent my own songs, but the problem is you don't know why those points are chosen. So what will happen is sometimes the points will work, sometimes not. Chinese medicine has very strong fundamental theories. Any effective medicine needs a solid foundation of theory and logic. That would be true knowledge. We can not only practice superficial TCM in that there is one point or one herb for one problem. Okay, let's say you learn a few tricks or some really effective points for certain conditions and think that is all there is to it. Learning this way, I admit, will allow you to see the clinical effect fast. However, you must know the foundations well so that you can apply the theories and change your treatment plans accordingly. There can be endless diseases that you have never heard of before in which you can use the theories and devise a treatment plan. Okay. The first group, the A group, is the five-element point combination method. Tonify the mother for deficiency and sedate the son for excess. There are also conditions that are neither excess or deficient, etc. Then, we have Jing, Rong, Shu, and He. Jing points are often bled, so they are excellent in treating heart conditions. Also, Jing points are excellent in treating Zhang disorders, such as blood, qi, hun, po, and spirit. Blood, qi, hun, po, and spirit are closely related to the Zhang. If you are patients with Shen disturbance, you feel like their spirit has departed from the body, then you can use what point? The Jing points. They can appear a bit strange, have nightmares, or maybe have mental disorders. You can consider using the Jing points. Stomach 45, Spleen 1, for example, to treat spleen and stomach-related problems. I have talked about these two points in my earlier class. Don't be happy if you dream of a female ghost. It's scary. You may wet your pants. Most people just have dreams, but when one has nightmares, you should be careful. It's beyond normal to dream about scary, strange dreams. So you need to use Jing points to treat these cases. Actually, many Jing points belong to the 13 ghost points. In Neijing and Nanjing, diseases of the Zhang level, Jing points must be used. The pathology of the disease is deep in the Zhang organ. Zhang is responsible to store our blood, spirit, qi, Hun and Po. So, for example, if you have an unconscious patient, you would choose the Jing point of the kidney. Kidney 1. How can someone be normal in one moment but another be unconscious? It must have something to do with the spirit, Qi, blood, Hun, and Po. If you lived in ancient China, would you think he or she was possessed by a ghost? Or the spirit has departed? So, you have to use the Jing points. Same with an acute stroke case and why we needle or bleed Shishuan, EXUE11. It's the same principle. So that's how you use the Jing point. Next is the Ying point. This is easy. It's for heat. Shu points. It treats heaviness of the body and pain. It also treats conditions that come and go or sometimes severe and sometimes mild. Shu points are used to treat dampness and the spleen. It's especially true on the yin channel. So if you say, you will go down the chart and pick out all the points to treat angina. Since shoe points can treat pain, you want to use A2C to find the shoe point of the pericardium. Okay, and guess what? The answer is also pericardium 7, right? Because Jing, Rong, Shu, and He Pericardium 9, pericardium 8, pericardium 7, pericardium 5, pericardium 3. According to the A2 prescription method, the shoe point is pericardium 7, same point as the mother and son method. So you would use pericardium 7 for myocardial infarction and angina. That's great. Not only is that the point to use according to the method up here, it's also the same according to this method down here. 
so this point must be good, since both methods derive from the same point. You must use this point. If everyone thinks a certain person is kind and nice, everyone, no matter who you ask, you may think, I wonder if he bribed everyone to say good things about him. Sometimes in politics, yes, it's like that. But acupuncture points are not tricky like people. If multiple theories point to the same point, then just use that point. So you can take notes for treating excess pericardium condition. Myocardial infarct and angina, use pericardium 7, pericardium 4. Next time you encounter a patient with these conditions, check back to your reference, then you know what points to use. Let me give you another example, palpitation and anxiety. Most cardiovascular diseases such as high blood pressure and cholesterol are chronic diseases. We don't need to tonify the heart so much, but rather we need to stabilize the condition. Pericardium 6 is one of the most researched acupuncture points. Do you ever have to convince your patients that this point is good for them? How do you convince them? Why is it good for you? You only have to show them the research. I used to read them every day back in the hospital. So you can choose a research that shows how pericardium 6 can improve arrhythmia. You can say, okay, here is the research. Would you like to try? Research even shows that the effect of this point can be equivalent to the arrhythmia drug amiodarone. Your research says so. And so do our theories. Would you like to try it? If they are willing to try, you can needle them. If there is improvement, then they can accept acupuncture. I think it's very convincing to show research to patients. I am not sure if you have access to these papers, but in the line group that we will create, I can share some of the papers so you can give your patients more confidence. So you can list the symptoms in which pericardium 6 can be used over here. Pericardium deficiency, use pericardium 6. This is also the Luo point of the Yuan Luo point method. So this is a brief introduction to the A group. Yesterday, we talked about stroke. Jing River points treat cough, asthma due to cold or heat. It can also treat loss of voice. For those with aphasia post-stroke, or strange disorders where, suddenly they cannot speak. Maybe they got a call that he won the lotto and was too happy. Or a call that says they failed the final and cannot graduate. Almost always, the mood is severely affected leading to inability to talk. This type of aphasia. What point do you need? Jing River point. You can further decide if the condition is caused by the mood or shen, more psychological, you then must use the heart channel point, heart four. If the heart condition involves the blood vessel, you need to use the pericardium point, pericardium five. How about stroke? Of course, you need to use pericardium 5 and also heart 4. Also, you need to use kidney 7. Together, they are great to treat post-stroke aphasia. Okay. So these are the three points for aphasia. It's easy. Pericardium 5, heart 4, and kidney 7. Aphasia 3 points. But I want you to understand why these three points work. It's impossible for me to teach you how to treat diseases. You must learn to devise a treatment plan yourself. Okay, how about if there is chronic cough leading to loss of voice? Cough, it's a problem of the lung, correct? What's the Jing River point of the lung channel? Lung eight. Got it? Let me give you a tip. Clinically, Many people have hoarseness of voice or voice loss after a cold, other than having to add some lung yin tonics since Los Angeles is dry. Pay attention to see if the patient has any stomach issues. Many voice loss or hoarseness is due to inflammation in the stomach. How? The irritation and swelling of the vocal cords can be the result of the backflow of stomach fluids into the throat. 
There are two scenarios. First is actual yin deficiency in which the patient needs yin tonics. Second, there is inflammation in the stomach. In such cases, you need to use herbs that reduce stomach inflammation. Most commonly used if the patient still has a cold would be the Xiao Chai Hu Tang with Huang Lian. You can use whatever formula so long as you get rid of the stomach inflammation. These are the two possible reasons. The most overlooked one is stomach inflammation. My go-to treatment for hoarseness of voice or voice loss after a cold is easy. Don't forget the following. Many, after a cold, because they have taken so much different medicine and drank a lot of water, leads to excess burden on the stomach and causes it to be inflamed. You need to ask if the patient has nausea, vomiting, or poor appetite. If they show these symptoms, that basically means there is stomach inflammation. The formula I use the most is Xiao Chai Hu Tang without Ren Shen and add Huang Lian, or Mai Men Dong, Ji Mu, Bai He. If you want to use the last three yin tonics I mentioned, your patient needs to have yin deficient signs like dry lips, thin pulse. Then you can use yin tonics freely. So now you know how to treat voice loss due to a cold. Next, let's talk about the Yuan and Luo point method. The Yuan source point of the kidney is kidney 3. Yuan source points are hot in nature and has more yang energy and penetrates all 12 channels. So, kidney 3 is better at tonifying kidney yang. Kidney 7 is better for replenishing kidney yin. As for Luo points, we use it more for chronic disorders. If you have a patient with chronic cough, chronic bronchitis, what would you use? Use the Luo point of the lung channel, lung 7. A few days ago, I demonstrated how to needle this point correctly. Don't be scared to needle this point. We talked about Xi cleft point earlier. Sometimes you need to combine Luo and Xi points. One of my students asked me if cancer is considered an acute or chronic disease. Should we use Luo or Xi point for cancer? Cancer is a stubborn disease. Xi point lung 6 must be used. If the lung cancer has been around for 2 to 3 years, then it's also considered a chronic disease. Should we use the Luo or the Xi point? You don't have to pick just one. Your patient is not asking you to only use one needle. If you are dealing with a chronic and stubborn disease, just use Luo and Xi points together. It's easy. Okay, 5 Zeng Bietong, branching relationship. This method is also commonly used. The theory is proposed by a doctor in the Xing dynasty, found in the Wu Zhang Chuan Zhao Lun reference. It originated from the Yi Shu Ru Men in the Ming dynasty by Dr. Li Ting. The most commonly used is the relationship between liver and large intestine. This is why points on the large intestine channel can treat liver qi stagnation. Which point is it? The Yuan point of the large intestine channel, large intestine 4. Both channels need to be connected. Let me repeat again. The 12 channels have a Biao Li interior exterior relationship. For example, lung and the large intestine. This is describing a husband and wife relationship. One goes out to work and the other stays home. Large intestine is the exterior, lung is the interior. They have an exterior interior relationship. So we all know from our life experience. Let's say you are the husband. Is it possible that the only female you know is your wife? Is it possible that you don't have any other good female friends? You may still have good friends who are female. Other than the relationship of being husband and wife, you may still have a relationship with another female. Someone like your soulmate. You might chat with her once in a while and complain about life or your wife, etc. But you won't cross that line. After all, the legal wife is someone else. Channels also have their own soulmates. Another good friend, this relationship is the Wu Zing Bai Tong, branching relationship. So although liver and gallbladder have the interior-exterior relationship, but liver and large intestine are also good friends. They are connected by a branching relationship. It's kind of like you meeting someone whom you feel very close and compatible with, but he or she cannot be your husband or wife. So this is the branching relationship. Liver and large intestine are connected this way. When they are connected this way, 
which point connects both channels. Of course, the best point is the Luo point, which can best connect the two channels. Some people are more introverted and like to study all day. Others like to go out and have fun and meet new friends. So let's say if you want to organize a social event between different cities, would you look for the person who likes to study to organize the event, or would you look for the one who likes to socialize? Of course, the one who likes to socialize, right? Who is that? The Luo point. It likes to connect. Through Yuan Qi to penetrate through all 12 channels, you have the Yuan points. When you utilize the Wu Zong Biet Tong five organ branching system, the most commonly used points are the Yuan and the Luo points. The Yuan point of the large intestine channel is connected to the liver channel. Large intestine four is the point which can spread liver qi stagnation. It can also move qi and blood. Indirectly, of course, the best three channels to move qi and blood are which ones? Which channel is related to blood? Which Zhang Fu? Heart governs blood, spleen keeps the blood in the vessels, liver stores blood, they are all correct. So all herbs that move blood will enter these three channels. Check your herb book again. It's definitely true. Blood movers will enter at least these three channels. Tao Ren enters the large intestine because it can lubricate the bowels. It's logical. If you think in terms of the five Zhang organs, out of these three channels, heart, spleen, and liver, there must be points that can move blood and remove stasis. Otherwise, they are useless. Make sense? The three key points to move blood are pericardium 7, spleen 10, liver 2 through to liver 3. These are the three best points to move blood. Okay, so. The most commonly used pair in the five Zhang branching theory is the relationship between liver and large intestine, stomach and pericardium, also commonly used. That's why the Luo point of the pericardium, pericardium 6, can treat stomach pain. Spleen and small intestine are also commonly used. That's why small intestine 4 can treat jaundice. Jaundice is considered a disease of the spleen in ancient TCM textbooks. TCM theory says that jaundice is damp heat accumulation in the spleen or damp cold in the spleen. Did you learn this in school? We would use formulas like Yin Chen Hao Tang, Yin Chen Wu Ling San, etc. Right? Do they enter the liver? No, they are formulas for the spleen, right? Today's hepatic diseases mostly belong to spleen disorders in ancient TCM texts. And in channel theory, spleen and small intestine are connected. So check your books. The reason why small intestine 4 is a key point in treating jaundice is because of this theory. Okay, so far I gave you a brief description of my 5 Zhang balance acupuncture. In Taiwan, actually, this lecture notes is for a much longer class. Yes, Jennifer. What does the number six in the notes mean? Okay. You see one to six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six indicate deficiency, excess, cold, heat, deficient heat. Deficiency is one. Excess is two. Cold is three. Heat is four. Deficient heat is 5. Then, stagnation is 6. Do you all see it? I use these numbers. The numbers next to the arrows. These numbers indicate a diagnosis. So, Jennifer. These are just codes. So, for example, I have a code for the organ. And then the number for the diagnosis. So essentially, these are just codes and numbers for convenience. It's irrelevant to today's lecture. It's not important, just my own codes. If you learn it, you can communicate with me this way too. Let me see if anything else is unclear.
Okay, only here is a bit unclear. So if you just write DA6, then I know you are treating a patient with obstruction in the pericardium channel. I don't have to say it all out. I organize them clearly where A1 means heart governing blood, A2 is heart governing the vessels. So it's clearer to me. You would know which formula I'm referring to if I have the codes DA1 to 1. It's my circulation formula number 1. If it's DA2 to 1, then it's my Circulation formula number two, for deficiency. So we can use this A2 chart, which is easy to understand. When you want to treat the Zhang organ, mostly we will look at the yin organs. So I would say, let's look at the yin channels. Wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Do you notice that the earth points are all shoe points too? You will also notice both of these are related to earth. Joint pain and body ache can be related to dampness, right? A symptom that exacerbates during a particular time is also related to dampness. Next is metal. Isn't that related to the lung? Cough, dyspnea, cold, and heat are all related to the lung. Voice changes are also related to the lung. If you only analyze the five elements, all the yin organs in the five elements are directly related to the function. They are closely related. How about the yang channels? The five elements don't match. Let's say yin point is to treat heat. Yin points are also the fire points on all yin channels. Understand? On the yang channels, yin points are water points. Water can also quench fire, right? So isn't it possible that the yin channel lowers its own fire in the organ? And in the yang channel, the yin point is the water point. And by needling this point, you are bringing more water to quell the fire. There isn't just one accurate answer. It can be explained in many different ways. What I mean is, don't be hesitant to use a point just because you can't think of a good explanation. These points have been used for thousands of years. It's up to you to find a good explanation. You not being capable does not mean others are incapable as well. Any ying point can treat heat conditions. In the five element theory, it makes perfect sense. Ying point belongs to fire and when it's needled, the fire is turned down. Same with the water point on the yang channel. Needling the point will move the water over to quell the fire. It's a perfect explanation. Understand? Okay, let's continue. Okay, let me tell you the answer. You can use these points for deficient patients. In the afternoon, I will talk about allergies. Many may have lung qi deficiency, lung 9, ren 6. If you use the A1A system, it's lung 9, and C6 method will give you ren 6. Yesterday, one of you mentioned a case of a boy with testicles not descending. He doesn't like herbs or acupuncture. Tianwang Bu Xindan was given and there was only a 30% improvement. So, what would you do? Tianwang Bu Xindan is a formula to tonify the heart and calm the Shen. It's not designed to treat the testicles. Although we are all acupuncturists, each of us certainly can treat some disorders better than others. Let's say we send a cancer patient to an infertility expert. I am sure he or she can still treat the cancer patient, but surely it is not his specialty. I am sure he or she can tonify whatever organ is deficient. But I am certain if a practitioner sees cancer patients every day, he or she can do better. Is it possible to not have any effect? Not likely, since we are all licensed and trained. Understand? Same logic. If an infertility patient went to a doctor that specialized in stroke, I am sure he or she can't produce as good of a result as Jennifer. But is it possible not to see any result? I don't think so. Maybe only 30%. After all, he or she is still a TCM doctor. But for better results, it's better to go to Jennifer because she sees infertility patients every day. You know what I mean? Yesterday, someone in the audience asked me about a case of a kid who has asthma since he was young. Now the testicles won't descend. His parents don't want to use Western medicine treatments. With Tianwang Bu Xindan, they saw a 30% effect. If Tianwang Bu Xindan worked 100%, that means the problem is mostly psychological. Why? Because the formula has a lot of Shen calming herbs. 
but it only worked 30% of the time, which means it's not purely psychological. He has a weak kidney and cannot store the jing properly. So obviously you need to tonify the kidney yin or the kidney yang. There are two types of kidney tonics, yang and yin tonics. Of course, slow maturation like this, when functions don't develop properly, it's more important to tonify the qi, more specifically the yang, to jumpstart the function. When there is insufficient substance, then you want to tonify the kidney yin. What's a good example? Menopause starts around 49. Women will experience dry skin, hot flashes. Tian Kui is ending. Actual substance in the body is deteriorating. You cannot tonify the kidney yang because you may worsen the hot flashes. There is already dryness. Tonifying yang will cause further dryness. So you have to tonify the kidney yin in this case. Understand? So yesterday's case of the kid. In order to tonify his chi, I can moxa ren 6. Ren 6, ren 4, ren 3. I don't have to use needles. Only moxa would be enough. Maybe only with that the testicles will descend. Got it? So A1A tonifies lung chi with lung 9. C6 is special point ren 6. So you can check your charts. I like to talk about kidney 7 and kidney 3 now. In order to needle these two points, your patient has to be able to stand the feeling of electric shock sensations. Or you should needle very superficially to just elicit the feeling of distension. Qi sensation includes soreness, heaviness, distension, numbness. Numbness is the strongest sensation. Sometimes my patients would complain about the electric shock sensation for the point stomach 40. That's so strange since that point usually doesn't produce that kind of a feeling. That may be their own qi sensation. Perhaps the body needs that point the most. Understand? So, these few points can easily produce the electrical shock sensation. If your patient dislikes that, then you have to use milder methods like moxa. You can also ask your patients to moxa themselves at home. I am not sure if that's customary here. Or you can do the moxa at your clinic. Just REN6, REN4, and REN3. You can also use Master Tung's point Tiang Huang Fu Sheng Guan T77.18 to tonify the kidney. I usually tell my patients that I won't always needle the point that gives them electric shock sensation. If you live 100 years, only half a year you have to endure the electrifying sensation of this point. After you become pregnant, we no longer need to needle you anymore. So six months out of 100 years, you only have to endure this point once or twice a week. Do it for your baby. Do it to get pregnant. You only need to endure for a short period of time in your life. If she can accept it, that would be best. Okay, this sums up deficiency. Let's talk about excess conditions now. We have pericardium 7 and pericardium 4. One is the sun point, the other is the she point. The rest you can figure out yourself. It's simple. Use lung 5 for lung excess or lung 6, the she point. The she point of the liver is rarely used and I feel quite ineffective, so I didn't list it here. Is it clear? As for the kidney, if you see patients with kidney stones, acute nephritis, acute edema, you can use these two points. The first is a she point. The other one is a sun point to sedate excess. I left it blank on your notes so you can fill it in. It's a good exercise. But it should be already filled out in English. Yes? No? Okay, you can copy it now then. We covered deficiency and excess. Now let's talk about cold. You have to further differentiate cold into excess or deficient cold, right? There are more deficient cold cases. Deficient cold patients just need tonify and use moxa, right? <laughs> just tonify the deficiency and add some warmth. For deficiency cold, you need to use tonic points plus moxa. For excess cold, use sedating points with moxa. Simple. Understand? It's a simple Chinese medicine concept.
So if a deficient person catches a cold, is that considered deficiency cold or excess cold? Yes, someone very deficient has an exterior condition. Excess cold. But we would use Renchen by Dusan, right? So then is it deficient cold or excess cold? Let's say this is a young patient. In 1997, I had this case. There's a young man who was studying acupuncture. He thought he was weak and deficient. He would catch a cold every month. One day, he caught another cold. He thought he can treat himself with acupuncture. So he thought since he is deficient, he will moxa lung 9. So the moxicone was placed on the needle on lung 9. Can you guess what happened at the end? After 10 minutes, the throat started to hurt. Ouch, ouch, why is it painful? You are all laughing. This young man from 20 years ago is you. <laughs> okay, it's me. So what did I do? I quickly pulled out the needle. And in the process, I burned myself. <laughs> so what did I do with the sore throat? So what did I do? So I had to use the sedating points. <laughs> Which points? Lung 11 and lung 10. After needling these points, ah, my throat was better. So that was my story. So in conclusion, it's rare that we use the tonification method in an exterior condition. Personally, I rarely use Renchen by Dusan. So the point is, most initial exterior conditions are excess cold in nature. Okay. If you are uncertain, then don't use it. It's too risky. That's my conclusion from 20 years ago. You understand this, right? Now for heat conditions, you want to use the ying points. It's so easy. Also use all the jing points. Jing points usually are bled. Yesterday we talked about bloodletting. Tina said yesterday that you need to use specific needles, and some states don't allow bloodletting or insurance companies don't cover it. So, but if you needle the jing point and there is blood after you withdraw the needles, then it's not considered bloodletting on purpose. So here are all the jing and ying points. You don't have to copy them down if you don't want to. The use of ying points are more based on theory. Jing points need to be bled in order to achieve a heat clearing effect. That's why I bled lung 11. So if you have a sore throat, you need to bleed the jing point of the lung, lung 11. Sometimes I would bleed Shaosheng, Laosheng, and Zhangsheng. These points are on the thumb, two on the corners of, and one fen proximal to the center base of the nail. Okay, you can copy down these points before I flip to the next slide. I can tell you other stories from 20 years ago to give you more time to write these points down. Stories from 20 years ago. What? You only remember the story but not the points? 20 years ago. Taiwan has what's called BBS. I am not sure if you know what that is. Throughout this BBS network, you can meet friends who share similar interests. For example, we would watch a basketball game together. Everyone is a Lakers fan, or Elephants fan, etc. We are a group of fans. In this group was a big man. His blood vessels are weaker. Since the heart is in charge of the vessels, I needled only one point, then he fainted. My first patient who fainted, he was big and strong. Sometimes those who are big and strong are more likely to faint with needles. Of course, if you want to be more professional, don't panic and pull out all the needles at once. You only need to use the standard protocol for fainting needle by pulling out the needles a bit. Press do 26. Pull gallbladder 21. Pull the muscles on gallbladder 21. Press do 26. Also press pericardium 6. So pull gallbladder 21 like this. Understand? You can do this if the patient is lying down as well. If the patient is sitting, then pull gallbladder 21 and push on pericardium 6 and do 26. Also, you can press heart 8. Heart 8 is a relief point to relieve fainting. You need to use ying points for conditions with color changes. Remember? So heart 8 can be used when patient is fainting with the color changing on the face. Heart 9, pericardium 6, do 26 and lift the muscles on gallbladder 21. Drink some hot water and give the patient a slice of ginseng to keep in the mouth. If you don't want to use needles, you can pull out all the needles and ask the patient to lay down and lift the legs. That would promote more blood flow to the brain. You can still do the hot water and the Ren Shen. 
If you do this, there is a risk. You can decide what you should do in your country and environment. When you quickly remove the needles and ask the patient to lie down, after the patient leaves your clinic, he might tell others that I almost died in the clinic. The doctor needled all the wrong points and that's why he had to quickly remove them. So thank God I was able to lay down and put up my legs and I am so lucky I am not dead. That's the risk. So you need to choose if option one or option two is better for your environment. In the hospital, the protocol is to remove the needles and lay down. But the action of removing the needles is fast. Even if you are not nervous, the patient may feel you are panicking. So it's not unreasonable for the patient to remember this incidence and think you did something wrong. Or we can leave the needles in, which represents you didn't needle the wrong points. Fainting or dizziness may be a common result of acupuncture. Therefore, you still leave the patient in the same position he or she was in. Then massage heart 9, pericardium 6, and lift gallbladder 21. Ask the patient to take a deep breath. Also, suck on a piece of Ren Shen and everything will be fine. Understand? So, it's up to you. If you want to take the risk or not. Understand? Also, it depends on your clinic size. Mine is pretty small. So I will ask the patient to lie down. Or if you have many beds, you can ask your patients to lie down. It's up to you. So I always tell first visit patients to lay down on the bed. I never needle them sitting up. There is no problem when laying down. Got it? There won't be fainting needle when the patient is lying down. If they are dizzy, then prop up the legs. They won't faint. You don't know your patient well yet on the first visit. You don't know if this person is afraid of needles, came on an empty stomach, or the nervous type. After all, it's the first time, so they may be nervous. Then just needle them on the treatment table. It's the safest. Understand? Now, this. I just finished describing the story of a young man from 20 years ago. So use Jing and Ying points for heat conditions. Ying points address heat in the body. Jing points are best at purging heat when it's bloodlet. Deficiency heat syndrome. Is acupuncture effective for treating deficiency heat? Deficient heat syndrome involves both deficiency and heat. Most of the time it's due to yin or fluid deficiency leading to the deficient heat. What do you think? I am sure your various treatment methods, acupuncture, herbs, tuina, or whatever else you know, among all these knowledge, If you need to treat deficient heat, which one is best? Acupuncture or herbs? Or is it Tuina? After Tuina, the patient won't feel as hot. How about spinal adjustment? Can it treat yin deficiency? <laughs> Unless you have some miracle technique to inject more Shao Yin into the patient while you do Tuina, or else it's quite impossible with Tuina. Do you think acupuncture or herbs is more effective to tonify yin? Of course, herbs, right? With acupuncture, it's difficult. It seems like you can tonify the deficiency, but the more you tonify, the hotter the patient gets. Also, when you sedate the heat, the patient becomes more deficient. So you can only use an even method when you are needling, not the tonification or sedating techniques. We need to nourish the yin and clear heat. If there is a sore throat due to a common cold, Grace said Los Angeles is dry. I don't feel it yet. Maybe only a little dryness on my ears here. So you can use herbs such as Mai Mendong, Jimu, Bai He. Most yin tonics are a bit sticky or dense. Most are roots, more nourishing in nature. They are kind of sticky. Like... What is the name of that? A certain kind of candy. Like gummy bears. Tian Mendong is like that when you chew on it. My Mendong too. Even the shape is like a candy. When you chew on it, you can feel it's rich and watery. So, 
To tonify yin, you need herbs. You need to replenish substance with substance. What if you only have needles? Out of all the points on the body, covering all Zhang Fu, which point is most representative of a water dam? Kidney. Tonifying the kidney yin can nourish all the rest of the organs yin. Tonifying kidney yang will boost all of the yang of the other organs. Kidney is not only the power plant of the body, it's also the water dam. Kidney has both fire and water. So when you want to tonify yin, you should tonify the kidney yin. The best point to clear heat, deficient heat, is kidney 6. Needling kidney 6 has the same effect as drinking ice water. Kidney 7 is more like drinking cold water. So kidney 6 is better at nourishing yin. In addition to kidney 6, you can also needle the ying point of the channel you are specifically addressing to further purge some heat. Understand? So the best point is kidney 6. It can also treat Xiao Yin type of sore throat. There is no need to manipulate the needle to sedate. This point's nature is to nourish heat and clear heat. There is no note to sedate yin points in order to achieve a heat clearing effect. There is no special instructions to use the sedating method. No. That means the nature of the point is to sedate heat already, just like you are a man, a male. With needle manipulation, I can change the effect. So the ying points by nature can clear heat without you having to do any sedating techniques. Just the even stimulating method can already sedate heat. Now, if you sedate, of course, the sedating effect will be even stronger. What happens if you tonify? Maybe you can change the nature of the point, but that's not natural. If we want to put on a play and we are missing a female role, and we ask a man to pretend to be a woman for this role, he may trick some people, but the movement or the voice may not be as soft and will give it away. So manually trying to reverse the natural effect of a point is unnatural. It won't be as effective. Each point has its own characteristic. Yin points by nature clear heat. You want to play God and mocks at that point so it can be tonifying. That contradicts the nature of the point. Then it becomes a battle of which is stronger. Why do you want to do that? Keep it simple and just use the ying point to sedate heat. If you want to tonify the yang, then find a tonic point and then moxa on that point. Understand? So you need to learn the natural characteristics of the points. You want to achieve the effect without having to do any manipulation. You can enhance its natural characteristic. Great! If you want to reverse its nature, there may be a big problem. There may be complications. It may become a transgender point. It's not clearly a male or a female. I am not saying this to be disrespectful to transgender. It is then not clearly a tonic or a sedating point. The body may be confused as to what it should do. So it's best to follow nature. Okay, Grace, is it time for a break? Let's talk about treatments next. We spend an hour to review and talk about the theories. To really treat infertility, you need specific strategies and plans. It's not enough to just use the theories I discussed, tonify kidney if there is kidney deficiency, etc. We need to talk about strategies that work in the clinic, too. Jennifer, you have a question? Yes, on page 3, the 5 Zhang balance method. Excess cold and deficiency cold. How do we differentiate them in terms of symptoms? Deficiency cold is a chronic condition. Understand? Excess cold is not as commonly seen. I rarely see it. This video is going to be viewed by acupuncturists throughout the world, so I listed it for reference. Most cases are deficiency cold. Deficient cold syndrome can develop from excess intake of cold drinks. In Taiwan, it's very common that we call this syndrome deficiency cold of the stomach. The cold food or beverages affect your uterus makes you have aversion to cold, or have delayed menstruation, have clots, or have pale complexion. That means you have a cold uterus. Kidney yang deficiency. Kidney yang deficiency is a deficient condition, right? 
deficiency with cold manifestations. It's a chronic condition. Excess cold is very rare. If you are in Siberia and suddenly it's very cold, which leads to a severe headache or severe stomach pain, then that's excess cold. Acute cold is excess cold. In our normal environment, in Taiwan, it's very rare. Maybe also in the U.S. it's rare. But if your practice is in Alaska or Siberia and see someone who came from a warm climate and suddenly have severe stomach ache, that's excess cold. Question from the audience. Let's say that I go from home up the mountains to ski for one hour. Does that count as excess cold? You need symptoms to qualify for a diagnosis. Our body has the power to withstand the elements of nature. Only if symptoms start to appear do you need to analyze what is the diagnosis. Is it an infection? Is there a fever? Chills? If there is a fever, it's an exterior condition. If there is no fever, just a severe stomach ache, and the pain becomes better with warmth, then you need to find a point to relieve the cold stagnation. Stomach 43 is a good one, and so is stomach 34. Or you can just use REN12 or REN10. Both are neither tonifying nor sedating. You can simply mox at these points to dispel the cold. Dispel this sudden cold invasion. But if you are suffering from a chronic condition, where there is pain for several years, and the pain worsens mildly with the intake of cold food, then you are dealing with deficiency cold. You need to mox at points like stomach 36. Spleen 6, Spleen 4. Would you please show us? Pages 8 and 9 on your PowerPoint slides. Page 8, Deficiency. Basically, we use A1A for everything. Tonify the mother. A1A for every organ. Here we have the A1A for both the spleen and the stomach. Sorry, we don't use A1A for the stomach because for the foo organs, we don't discuss excess or deficiency. Do you notice that? For example, we don't usually describe the bladder as deficient or excess. It's very rare. Sometimes we would say the stomach is excess or deficient, but most of the time they are used to describe the Zhang organs only. So, for the stomach, we choose the earth point on the same channel. Do you notice that stomach 36 is the tonic point for both the spleen and the stomach, according to different methods? Next, kidneys A1A is, of course, kidney 7. B1A is kidney 3. According to the C5D method, it's also kidney 3. Page 9, please. Excess. Oh, that's so easy. Remember, my friends in the webinar, use the A1B method to sedate the sun for all excess conditions. Just find the sun point of the respective channel. It's all written here. The sun point of the lung channel, because lung is metal, wood, fire, earth, metal, water. We need to look for the water point, lung 5. Spleen 5. Spleen is earth. Wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Let's find the metal point. What is it? Spleen 5. I am sure you can figure all this out yourself. First find the sun point, second find the she point. The she point of the spleen channel is spleen 8. Okay, so got it? Let's take a break now and then continue on to the clinical portion. All right, let's take a 10-minute break and we'll return here at 10.40 a.m. 